We're here today in the ancient village of Shottock in Cheshire, first recorded in the Doomsday Book of 1086 AD. It was from here where Henry II began his journey to Ireland and where Edward I set off on his journey into Wales. Also here that a castle, a Norman castle, was built in the year of 1093 by Hugh Lupus, the first Earl of Chester. Welcome to Rambles Through History. Although the Norman castle of Shottock lay in ruins by the 17th century, the land upon which it once stood is today what we know as Shottock Park, close to what was the River Dee. However, due to the area suffering the effects of silting and the construction of a canalised section of the river in 1736, the village is no longer as close to the River Dee as it once was. Today we've come here to visit St Michael's Church in the village, a church that we know was in existence at the time of the Doomsday Book. At the time the Doomsday Book was written, it was in the possession of secular canons of St Werburgh's in Chester. However, following this, it was confirmed to the Benedictine monks in the year of 1093. Now the Norman structure was once again rebuilt during the 14th century, but luckily they decided to preserve the Norman doorway and we can still see it today. The building that still stands here today consists of a nave, a north aisle, a chancel and a tower, and whilst the majority of this structure can easily be dated to the 14th century, the tower was constructed around 1500 AD. Now church towers were from the earliest times used as towers and beacons for villages and communities across England and beyond and here at St Michael's was certainly no exception. Indeed across the fields to the north of St Michael's stood another church with a tower and they could signal to each other as and when needed. Now probably one of the best features of St Michael's has to be the surviving Norman doorway. With its elaborate Chevron ornamentation, the entrance to the church has a door that's been used by parishioners and clergy for many centuries. Even the steps that lead to the nave are heavily worn by the feet of thousands of people who have passed through this doorway on their journey to prayer. Now the Church of St Michael here in the village has been here serving the people of the village for over 1,000 years and even today in the 21st century it still serves 120 people who live here in the small village of Shossack. The church also occupies a strategic position in the landscape and stands on the site of an old ford that once crossed the River Dee being the border with Wales. I find it hard to believe that such an iconic river as the Dee once ran so very close to St Michael's. 
so close in fact that boats could tie up nearby. Well, as you know, no episode of Rambles Through History would be complete if I didn't take you on a virtual tour of this magnificent double dialed medieval church. As we enter through the porchway, we find a series of grooves cut into the sandstone. These grooves are believed to be the result of men preparing arrows for archery practice nearby. It was mandated by a decree of King Edward III in 1363 that all men should practice archery on a Sunday on a regular basis and always be prepared to defend the realm. Now I don't know about you, but I find it absolutely amazing that archers were making these marks sharpening their arrows some 600 years ago, and even today they're still here for people to see for themselves. As we enter St Michael's, I'm immediately drawn by the wonderful 15th century south door that leads to the inside of this magnificent medieval structure. I have immediately noticed these wonderful wooden pews, square pews with doors enclosing the seats. I've no doubt that these were lockable as some still have traces of locks. As well as some box pews having locks, others also had brass nameplates bearing the names of individuals. As with many churches, we find the font close to the doorway, and St Michael's is no exception, and we can see for ourselves this beautifully carved stone font dating right back to the 15th century. It really fires the imagination to think that children and adults have been baptised within this font for over 600 years. Many churches across Cheshire and indeed England have their own royal coat of arms and here at St Michael's we find here upon the tower wall such a coat of arms. Purchased in the year of 1726, the frame represents the coat of arms of George I. The cost of the painting, just £1.10 ten shillings, and of course one shilling for the frame. Here within the church and directly below the bell tower stand some very interesting carved stones. Now here in the church we find a massive heavy stone weight with an iron loop and of course a wheel attached to that with a cable. For this once drove the church clock before it was modernised and made electronic in the year 2000 rendering this stone useless. Now as well as the pews that we see here at St Michael's today, there still remains this wonderful church warden's pew, carved in 1673, with the addition of the canopy in the year of 1709. If we look closely at the church warden's pew, we find inscribed on the front the following. Robert Coxon, James Gilbert, church warden 1709, but it also reads Henry Gowan, Will Huntington, Church Wardens 1673. Now it's recorded in the church accounts that this church warden's pew once was lavished with curtains and matting. It seems to me little doubt that these church wardens were held in high regard. Today, Many of the fixtures and fittings date between the 17th to 19th centuries, including a very rare three-decker pulpit that is still in use to this day.
Now here at St Michael's we find a very rare three-decker pulpit and brought here from Chester in the early 19th century. However, the sounding board that would have been above my head has long since disappeared. <laughs> Now before the three-decker pulpit was fitted in the 19th century, an earlier 17th century pulpit stood in its place. That however, in turn, was returned to Chester in the 19th century when this one was brought to St Michael's. Here in the north aisle of the church we find what is known in local folklore as the Devil's Door. No longer in use today, it got its name way back in the Middle Ages when the door opened onto unconsecrated ground of the church, believed at that time to be haunted by evil spirits. Indeed, in the Middle Ages, the only people to be buried beyond this northern door were criminals, the illegitimate, and those who had committed suicide. <laughs> Here, in the year of 1641, that written records give the names of many people who died of the plague. They succumbed to the illness and were buried in the churchyard here at Shuttock. The sickness raged here at Shuttock for over four months, but what was highly unusual was that the outbreak didn't spread beyond the village boundaries. In a letter sent from Chester to London, it stated, it hath spread no more, blessed be God. The churchyard here at St Michael's is the final resting place of those who died and perished in the plague of the year of 1641. There are so many wonderful and interesting stories recorded here at St Michael's over the centuries and indeed they're kept within the records of both the church and the church wardens. One such example recalls an unusual case here at Shottock and dealt with by the consistory courts in the year of 1629. It related to a number of thefts from the church and alleged to have taken place some 28 years earlier. This raised many questions as to why it had been brought up after so many years had elapsed. The case was promoted by the church wardens at that time and they accused several earlier church wardens of various crimes. These included keeping incorrect accounts, stealing vestments to the value of £15 and stealing £32 in weight of bell metal along with £200 in weight of lead. There are so many other stories to be told here from centuries past However, to tell them would take forever. Shottock may be a small village with a small church, but it certainly has a big history. The bell tower here at St Michael's is believed to have been constructed around 1500 AD. Today the bell tower houses a peal of six bells consisting of four new bells bequeathed by Reverend F. R. Wandsberg in 1938 and two much older bells dated to 1616 and 1621 respectively. However, in October 2010, a bell dated to 1664, which had been removed in 1938 due to being untunable, was sadly stolen from the church, and to this day it has never been found. There's so much wonderful history here awaiting further exploration, and if you get the chance, why not come and see Shottick and St Michael's Church for yourself?
If you've enjoyed our visit here today to St Michael's Church, then why not join me again soon as I take you on more rambles through history. My name's James Mum, TV presenter for history, bringing history to life.